Liz Cosby here with Yoga Yoga Flow. Today we're filling in the universal grid, not excluding the inversion. So we're getting started right away in Vajrasana, broken toe pose. Tuck those toes. You can manually tuck the pinky toes. Make sure those guys are in on the party as well. And we'll start with some Sat Kriya as well. Breath of fire, focus on the exhalation and then the inhalation will come naturally. So it sounds like this. Sweep the hands on up. Interlace all the fingertips of the index finger and thumb. Inhale deeply through the nose. Open the mouth and pant like a dog. Take that up into your nose. And inhale deeply. Exhale, slide out the mouth. <sighs> Release hands to the thighs. Pause for a few moments. Notice the effects. And then walk the hands forward and tuck the toes. The gentle drum will kick the feet out. The windshield wiper at the heels. Now fingertips point towards midline, palms facing up. Bend in the elbows, ball the hands in the fists, now straighten through the arms, breathe into the wrists. Just as far as feels comfortable. And again, yogis, we are covering a lot of ground today, so please practice ahimsa, lovingly expanding consciousness in your field. If anything feels uncomfortable, please back off, find a modification, little baby steps. I'll be offering out lots of modifications along the way. Release, fingertips point towards your knees and lean your weight back. Slowly peel the heels of the hands up off of the mat. Fingertips will lift very last. Walk your hands back, lift your knees up, stretch your the bridges of the feet. And then slowly lower back down again, back into your tabletop pose. From tabletop, inhale as you melt the heart forward and up, sit bones, reach up, gaze up. Exhale around the spine, gaze at me. Inhale as you pull the chest forward. Exhale as you round. Take it into your bear pose. Hip circles, shoulder circles, whatever feels good on the spine. Give yourself permission to express yourself creatively with body language. Puppy dog pose when you're ready, knees back, hands forward. Melt the heart down towards the mat, or extend the signals up towards the ceiling. Breathe into your thoracic spine, maybe lift on top of the fingertips. Spot the eyes towards each other, plug arms in the shoulder sockets. Forehead can come to the mat. Chin to the mat, maybe the whole chest reaches the ground. You can tuck the toes, press down with the big toe mounds, maybe even straighten through those legs. Release the knees back down. If you've lifted them, press down through the forearms. Roll it forward into your sphinx pose. Elbows stacking on your shoulders. Broaden across the collarbones. Drop right ear towards right shoulder. Let your mouth your chest. Lift your left shoulder. Breathing into your cervical spine. Back through the center, extend the arms forward, right arm, left leg lift. And switch, left arm, right leg lift. And switch. And switch. Both arms and legs lift, cactus the arms, press down the fingertips, lift your chest up. Drop the right shoulder, gaze over your left. Inhale through center. Exhale, a twist. Moving back and forth from side to side, serpent pose. Back through the center to inhale. And exhale, slowly release the spine back down. Hands come behind the back, interlace your fingers. Massage your sacrum with your knuckles. And then reach the hands back behind. Reach out through the balls of the feet, spiral on your thighs, up towards the ceiling. Tuck the chin and extend out the crown. Release the interlace. Hands side underneath the shoulders, press up, lift up, cobra pose. Wrap the elbows in, roll the shoulders back. Puff the chest, broaden across the collarbones. Tuck your toes, hips lift up and back, downward facing dog pose. Walk it out, bending one knee and then the other. Allow the hips to shift from side to side. Breathing into the calves, the hamstrings, the lower back. 
and then walk the hands back to the feet. Arrive in a forward fold at the back of the mat. You grab opposite elbows, shake the head yes, shake the head no, release your cervical spine. Release the hands down, right hand plants, bend right knee, sweep left arm up, twist the spine open. Maybe left hand reaches back for the half bind, reach back for the right thigh. Maybe right arm threads through for the full bind, optional. Send in breath wherever you are. Gently release, left hand plants, bend left knee, sweep the right arm up, twist the spine open. Gaze is at the right fingertips. Right hand can reach back for the left thigh half bar. Left hand can reach through, catch the wrist or fingertips. Roll that right shoulder back. In every posture, finding those opportunities to share life force energy. And then release, both hands back down to the mat. Inhale as you peel the chest forward, find some like arch your spine. And then walk it back out into your downward facing dog pose. Spread the fingers wide. Melt the heart rate, extend the sit bones up towards the ceiling. Right leg extends up and back. Open it out, bend the knee and take some hip circles, ankle circles. We extend the right leg, square off the hip, exhale, right knee, right tricep and forward into your plank pose from navel to spine. Inhale to extend. Exhale, right knee, left tricep. Inhale to extend. Exhale, knee to nose, round the upper spine. Gently step right foot between the palms. Left hand plants. Right arm sweeps up, open heart crescent. Gaze is at the right fingertips. Now rotate onto the outer edges of both your feet. Let the left hip dip. Right hand can reach back behind. Breathe into the IT band, intercostals. Beautiful, both hands come to the instep of the right foot, come onto the heel of the left foot for your skandhasana. Now walk it back and forth from side to side, pausing if you feel the stretching sensation. You can keep the hands on the ground. I always like to keep the hands on the ground for a couple rounds, just to make sure that the hips are nice and open, start to connect to the pelvic floor muscles. And then if you feel the invitation to float the arms up, find that mula bandha engagement and then walk the hands over to your left foot. Frame left foot with your hands. So we're facing the back of her. Sweep your left leg up and back in downward facing dog pose. Open it out, bend the knee and take some hip circles. Ankle circles. We extend the left leg. Square off the hips. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. Inhale, straight step. Exhale, left knee, right tricep. Inhale, straight step. Exhale, knee to nose, round the upper spine, gently step the left foot between the palms. Right away, right hand plants down, left arm sweeps up, open heart and crescent. Rotate onto the outer edges of both feet, let the right hip dip. Knees into the outer hip stretch, send in breath. Both hands to the instep of the left foot, come onto the heel of the right foot, back into your scone. And walk it back and forth from side to side. Maybe float those arms up. And then when you're ready, walk the hands over to frame your right foot. Step the right foot back, downward facing dog pose. Now facing the front of the room again. Walk the hands back. Arrive in the forward fold at the back of the mat. This time, press walk to the front of the mat. I'm going to break it down and do the easiest version first, and then escalate to the hardest version. Inhale as you peel chest forward, find like arch. Plant down through your palms so you can step the feet between the palms. Inhale, feel just work, find like arch. Plant down through your palms, toe tap one wrist, toe tap the other wrist. Inhale, feel just work, find like arch. Plant down through palms, maybe float the feet in between the palms. Last one, inhale, feel just work, find like arch. Plant down through the palms, maybe toe tap. Maybe press it up and slowly lower it back down. Inhale, peel chest forward, find length arch. Exhale, forward, forward. 
Ground sound lifts up both arms sweep up. We teach the asana to So the hands meet at the top, interlace all except for index finger and thumb. Side bend to the right. Jump the left hip out, pull your right shoulder forward. Charge up the legs, press the shin bones back, lift the kneecaps up. Inhale as you rise. Switch over to the left. Right hip just to the right. Roll left shoulder forward. Inhale as you rise. Cactus the arms, broaden across the collarbones. Inhale, both arms sweep. Share pose. Bend the knees. Right away, lift the heels. Slowly lower it down. Knees up and wide, reach your arms straight through. Gently take a seat. Hands come forward and in front of your hips. Lift up on the fingertips, draw your knees high up and in towards your chest. Now, maybe straight through the legs. Knees can stay bent though. Inhale as you lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Once more, inhales to lower. Exhale to lift. Feet to half. All right, hands back behind the hips. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. Inhale. Exhale, hips come back behind the wrists. Now lift one or both feet up. L sit. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. Exhale, hips come back behind the wrists. Lift one or both feet up. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. And gently set the hips back down. Hands come underneath the thighs, upright the spine, lean your weight back. Float the feet up. Maybe extend the arms straight through the legs. Maybe small boat ride. Inhales you lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Lower and hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Lift. Soles the feet together. Knees come wide. Hands underneath the feet. Press the elbows into the inner thighs. As you fold, breathe into your sacral region, lower spine. And spine back up through the seated, draw the knees in, feet come wide, hands behind hips, press up, lift up, malasana squat, elbows, inner thighs. So we're making our back through vinyasa. If you want to, you can incorporate a headstand, a crow pose, maybe both. Feel free to have fun with your, with your transitions, or you can just step it back into plank pose. So feel free to take any variations as well if it's calling out to you. Knees come high up and in towards the armpits and wait for it. Lift one or both feet. Maybe just try the Vakasana, even if you're not going to shoot it back. That's all good. Maybe you slowly lower your Vakasana down. Tuck the chin, very crown to ground. Press it up, lift it up. Tripod headstand. Squeeze the legs together at the top. Reach out from the balls of the feet. And then slowly lower, butt can come back as knees come forward. Knees come high up and in towards the armpits. Concentrate on pressing down through the shins. Lean the butt back. And rise the head up. Gaze forward, shoot the head forward as you shoot the feet back. Rear with bent elbows, forward staff. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, roll shoulders back. Exhale, Adho Mukha, hips lift up and back. Clearing breath, inhale deeply. Exhale, let it go. <sighs> right leg extends up and back as you inhale. And again, open it out. Bend the knee, you can take some hip circles. Left forearm lowers. Maybe lean into your new foundation, take it up into your funky pincha. You can also take a headstand here instead of a funky pincha. So you may not be lifted off of the ground yet today, and that's okay. Or maybe you're just exploring half dolphin, half down dog. Then slowly lower that left foot back down to the floor. Left elbow lifts back into one leg extended and downward facing. Exhale, knee to nose. Round up your spine. Gently sit the right foot between the palms. Inhale, rise, high crescent pose. 
Go for a scoop up. Cactus the arms. Left arm comes underneath right arm. Press the elbows together. Press the hands together. Find some extension in your slight back bend. And then start to lean weight forward into your right foot. Press up, lift up. Warrior three with eagle arms. Deep Ujjayi breaths. We're filling in the grid, yogis. Slowly come to your eyes. Draw your left knee into your chest. Left leg comes up and over right. Go for the double wrap if you can. Bend a little bit deeper into your left knee. Maybe hook the elbows up and over the left knee, lengthening the spine. Up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. A couple more deep Ujjayi breaths here. Stay connected. Slowly start to rise the spine. Release the left foot. Sweep it back, warrior three. And then dive the eagle arms to the mat. Standing splits. You extend left heel. Breathe into the right hamstrings. Right away, lower the left knee down behind your right foot and actually set the left shin down. Take a seat. So your left heel is by your outer right hip. Right hand behind the sacrum, left arm extends. Exhale, lift elbow outer to right knee. Firm the navel and as you twist, gaze over the right shoulder. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Maybe optional. If it's calling out, you can lift up onto the left shin. Hands can plant. Make a shelf with your arms. If you're brand new to this arm balance, you can use the right elbow on the right hip as an extra foundational point and maybe extend the legs. I could call it a kundinyasana. Gently rebend. Sit back down, counter twist to your left. And then back through to center, pressing down through the right foot, left leg sweeps up and back into your standing splits. Now you could just step the left foot back or hands plant, scoop the right foot back a little ways, push the floor away, connect the legs together at the top, squeeze the legs together at the top, find your bandhas, engage them, streamline your energy induction, and then slowly lower, right foot can maybe toe tap the right wrist. Left foot steps way back. So we arch down with the inner arch up. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. Both arms sweep up. Gaze up, lift your heart up. Hands come behind the back, interlace, broaden across the collarbones as you inhale. Exhale. Hinge from hips, lead with heart. As right shoulder passes the right knee, then begin to round, let the hands weigh heavy back behind. Ground down to lift up, roll the spine up, both arms sweep up, warrior one. Open out warrior two, adjust the stance. Heel to arch, relax the shoulders. Flip the right palm, reverse your warrior, left hand to thigh or calf, lengthening through the right side body, Breathe into the right side body. Inhale as you rise. Right elbow, right thigh. Left arm extends forward. Now you can stay here the whole time, yogis. Maybe left hand reaches back for the right thigh. Find the half bind. Right hand can come to the instep of the right foot. Maybe right arm threads underneath for the full bind. Full binders. Take flight. Left foot steps forward. Press up, lift up, root to rise. Bird of paradise. Gazing at a single point of focus or twisty. Straight if you're standing, then straight if you're lifting. And then slowly lower birds. Take your time. Pressing down through the right foot. Shift weight forward into crown. Left leg extends back. Bow half knee. Close on your way back. And then stepping it way back. Release the bind. Rise, warrior two. Flip it, reverse it, lengthen. Now windmill both hands down to the mat, bending deeply into the left knee, straight through your right leg. Back into our scant. 
Little moment to breathe, breathe. Left arm can sweep forward and in front of the left shin. Right arm can extend up into a rotate. Bend the elbows, reach back for fingertips or a wrist. Roll that right shoulder back. And then gently release. Right hand can catch your left shin. You can actually set your right hip down to the floor. Now right shoulder nuzzles up against that right knee. Left arm sweeps up and overhead, maybe catch the outer edge of the right foot. It's okay if the foot isn't there today, your knees. Just go as far as feels comfortable. And again, send breath in. Illuminate this space with your ujjayi. Then gently release. Rise back up into your skant. Press down through both feet, lift the hips up, windmill it up, warrior two. And straighten through that right leg, heel toe the left foot forward, shorten the stance, deepen in the right hip crease, extend the right arm forward, reach. Right hand to ankle, shin, floor, left arm extends up, twist the spine open, gaze is at the left fingertips. Deep ujjayi breaths. Send it in, yogis. Now the left hand comes down to the mat. Scoot the left foot forward and to the left. Lean into a Parjottanasana stance about three feet distance apart. Little tiny micro bend in that right knee is fine to prevent from hyperextension. Inhale as you find like excellent forward fold, starting to utilize all the heat that we've been generating to share life force energy with new space. Expanding the heart's consciousness. Absorbing prana, spiritualizing the matter, lifting up onto your fingertips, straight through both your arms, rounding the upper spine. Now plug the right femur head bone into the right hip socket. See if you can float the right foot off your mat just an inch. And set the right foot back down. Walk the hands over to the right, lengthen the spine up and down the pelvic bowl. Breathe into the lower back. Left hand plants outer to the right foot, right hand to your sacrum. Roll the right shoulder back, find a neutral pelvic bowl, and then maybe right arm extends, twist it open in space. Gaze is at the right fingertips. Deep ujjayi breaths. Make it audible, witnessing through sound and vibration. Then gently bend the right knee, same pose, taking on to one foot. Left leg floats up. Pravrita Ardha Chandrasana, maybe bend the left knee. Reach back with the right hand for the left foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. And then releasing the foot if you have Chalpasana. Right hand to mat. Square off the hips. Now, roll the left hip to stack, bringing the hips into external. Left arm can extend up. So switching from neutral to external hips now. Push out through the heel, reach out through crowd. Maybe bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand for your left foot, and kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Chalpasana variation. Beautiful, then gently release. Extend that left leg back. With grace and ease, step it back. Arrive, warrior two. Flip it, reverse it, lengthen. And windmill the hands down to the mat. This time, left heel lifts. Left knee lowers. Walk the right foot to the right. Forearms can lower. Ease into the hip stretch, nod the hips from side to side. Send in breath. And then right hand to right knee. Gaze over the right shoulder. Come on to the fleshy part of the left knee. Bend the left knee, reach back with the right hand for your left foot and press the heel towards your seat. Gently release. All right, here we go. Left shin comes perpendicular to the mat. 
right arm fits underneath the right leg. Now maybe pressing the leg into the arm, lean your weight back, left hand can catch the outer edge of the right foot, work towards straightening through the right leg. Gently release, optional, left leg can straighten back behind. Now lean weight into the upper arm, see if you can float that right leg up, maybe straighten. Maybe release that foot. And then release it back down for a moment. All right, so we're going to arm balance vinyasa. One of my favorite ways to move through vinyasa. You can always just step back though. So a close cousin to Vijvami Chavasana is Ekpai Kundinyasana. If you don't have the hip mobility quite yet to access this shape, no worries. One little trick, you can actually make a shelf with the arms, bend your right foot, or bend your right knee, bring the foot through, and then maybe float that left leg up. You can always bend that left knee too. If you do have the flexibility, but maybe not quite enough strength yet, you can wrap that left elbow in and actually set your left hip on top of your left elbow. It is a little crutch though, so eventually you want to be off of the elbow. So here we go. And then shoot it back. Vinyasa, inhale to your Urdhva Mukha. Roll shoulders back. Exhale, roll over toes. Hips lift up and back. Clearing breath, yogis. Inhale deeply. Exhale, let it go. <sighs> Left leg extends up and back. And you can take some hip circles, angle circles. Right forearm lowers. Maybe you're just exploring your half dolphin, half down dog. Funky pincha foundation. Maybe take it up into your funky pincha. And of course, leg variations are welcome here. You can also lower the crown of the head down to ground and take a variation of headstand to start to familiarize your, yourself with this funky inversion. And then right foot back down to ground, right elbow lifts, square off the hips, exhale, knee to nose, rounded upper spine, gently set the left foot between the palms. Inhale, rise, high crescent pose. Both arms sweep up, inhale. Cactus the arms. Broaden across the collarbones. Right arm underneath left. Press the elbows together, press the hands together. Find some extension, maybe a slight back bend. Pitch the heart forward. Knee weight foot into your left foot, press up, lift up, warrior three. And then slowly come to rise. Again, filling in your grid with that ujjayi. Right leg comes up and over left. Go for that double wrap if you can. Bend a little bit deeper into the left knee. Maybe hook the elbows up and over the right knee. Send in breath. Especially into the sacrum and the space between the shoulder blades here. And start to rise the spine. Engaging the back of your core, release the right foot and sweep it back. Warrior through with eagle arms. Now diving the eagle arms down to the mat. Release the arms, standing splits. We extend that right heel, breathe into your left hand, straight. Right knee comes behind the left ankle. Set the right shin down and set the hips down. So we have these bursts of heat punctuated by these moments of breathe for you so that we can catch our breath and we can still stay in the parasympathetic nervous system. Left hand behind the sacrum, right arm extends. Exhale, right elbow, average of left knee. Firm navel as you twist. Gaze over the left shoulder, deep ujjayi breaths. We can choose to stay in the seated twist or if you'd like the arm balance. Planting down through the palms, lift up onto the right shin. Left elbow if you need it. Kind of similar to the other aquatic Kuminyasana. You can use both elbows initially. Eventually, elbow isn't needed. Knee weight forward, straight through the legs. We bend and gently sit back down. Counter twist to the right. And back through 
to center. Pressing down through the left foot, right leg sweeps up and back for your standing splits. Left hand behind the ankle, right leg extends, breathe into the left hamstrings. Now you could just step that right foot back or hands plant, middle fingers in line, thumbs in line. Arms straight, push the floor away, left heel lifts. Plug the femur head bone into the hip socket as you hop. Kick towards yourself, squeeze the legs together at the top. Reach out and the balls of the feet. Knit those floating ribs together. And then slowly lower. Left foot can toe tap that left wrist. You can make sure that you are trimming your toenails. Right foot steps way back. So the average down with the arch up, inhale, rise up, warrior one. Gaze up, lift your heart up, yogis. Hands come behind the back, interlace. Opposite thumb on top, inhale as you find the exhale, hinge from hips. Lead with heart as the left shoulder passes the left knee, then begin to round the upper spine. Let the hands weigh heavy back behind. Grounding down to lift up, roll the spine up. Inhale, rise up. Open out, warrior two, adjust the stance. Heel to arch alignment. Flip the left palm, reverse it. Right hand to thigh, calf. Lengthen through the left side body. Breathe into the left side body. Inhale, rise. Left elbow, left thigh. Right arm extends forward. Right hand can reach back for the half bind. Left hand in step, left foot. There is a full bind. Full binders take flight. The right foot steps forward, press up, lift up, root to rise. Gazing at a single point, focus your drishti. Straighten through standing or straighten through lifting. Send in breath, send in your jai. Slowly lower. And we're really filling out the universal grid today. Just go to your depth, the best of your ability. We wait into your crown, pull the right leg back. And continuous practice, revisiting these shapes on an ongoing basis. Gently bend the left knee, set the right foot way back. Rise warrior two. We'll deepen in all of these trajectories. Flip the left palm and reverse it. Right hand up better, calf, lengthen. Windmill the hands down to the mat, bend deep into the right knee. Straight through that left leg. Right arm forward and in front of the right shin. Into a rotate both arms, bend at the elbows. Switch back for fingertips or a wrist. Lower your left shoulder back. Send in breath. Gently release the bind if you have it. Left hand can catch the right shin. Now nuzzle your left shoulder up against your left knee. Right arm sweeps up and overhead. Roll that right shoulder back. Gently release. All right, again, punctuations. Moments of reprieve. Back into the heat. Press up, lift up those hips again. Now windmill it up, warrior two. Straighten through left leg. Heel to right foot in. Deepen and left hip crease. Left arm extends. Left hand reaches to ankle shin floor. Right arm extends up, twist. Firm the navel as you twist. Scissor thighs together. Activate. Mola bond, firming pelvic floor. From navel to spine. Tuck the chin and we extend out through crown. Twisting all the way throughout the whole spinal column. And then gently release. Right hand to mat. Sweep the right foot forward to the right. Inhale as you find length and exhale in the forward fold. We're drawing some exquisite sacred geometry today, yogis. Again, be sure to breathe deep. Absolutely saturate your body with prana so as you hold space, you illuminate to your maximum potential, lifting up onto your fingertips. Straighten through both the arms, rounding the upper spine. Plug the left femur head bone into the left hip socket. Now see if you can float the left off the mat just an inch. And then set the left foot back down. 
Walk the hands to the left. Lengthen the spine up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Right hand plants outer to the left foot. Left hand to your sacrum. Stabilize your pelvic bowl. Roll the left shoulder back. Maybe left arm extends up and twist. Firm the navel in as you twist. Gaze is at the left fingertips. And again, all of these shapes become like familiar rooms in a house. And as you go in, you clear out space. They gain even more familiarity. So if this pose feels really awkward at first, that's okay. It honestly can be really challenging to balance, but once you start to get that groundedness in this shape, it can really open up in all directions. Then gently bend the left knee, lean right forward, press up, lift up, float the right leg up. Maybe bending in the right knee, reach back with the left hand for your right foot, kick the foot into the hand, slingshot the heart forward, Chalpasana variation. Beautiful work. Gently release, we extend the right leg back. You can pause in warrior three for a moment. And then roll the right hip to stack, moving from neutral to external. Right arm extends up, half moon pose. Maybe bending in the right knee, reach back with the right hand for the right foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Gently release with grace and ease, bending in that left knee. Step it way back, settle into your warrior two. Once more, flip it, reverse it, lengthen. Windmill the hands down. Right heel lifts, right knee lowers, forearms lower. You can walk the left foot to the left and left hand instep of the left foot. So this is actually third series of Ashtanga stuff, like these arm balances, and they just have you go straight into it. <laughs> Most of us mere mortals, uh, <laughs> we need to kind of open things up a little bit first before we attempt these arm balances. And Vishwamitrasana is actually an arm balance, right? Because you are using one hand as a foundational point. So it is uh, quite challenging. Be patient with yourself. Work the baby steps. Left hand to left knee, gaze over the left shoulder. Come off some fleshy part of the right knee, reach back with the left hand to the right foot. I love it though. I was really excited about this new prospect back in, way back in like 2010 was when I first started my practice. But it was, I was so familiar with just doing cardio or lifting weights. And when I got into it, I was like, oh, this is, this is so cool. I'm actually like re-sculpting. I'm a sculptress, sculpting my own body, gently release. With the heat that I generate from essentially the workout, using my own body as a weight system, right? It's, it's really fun. But again, take your time. We're not working with art materials. You are the art materials. So honor your body and its willingness to rearrange. Left arm comes underneath the left leg. Right shin perpendicular to the yoga mat. Bending in that left elbow. Shift weight back. Right hand can catch outer edge of the left foot. Maybe straighten through the left foot. Gently release. Those of you that want to try the full Vajramitrasana. Right leg extends back. Seal the outer edge down with the inner edge up. So you have a pod bond engagement back there. Then lean your weight back. Float the foot up maybe. Catch outer edge. Work towards straightening. Eventually, right arm can extend up. Gently release. All right. So here's the modified Ekpa Kundinyasana. Uh, this one is really challenging. You have to be patient with yourself, definitely, because if you don't have the space, then you really shouldn't try to force your body into this shape. That being said, here's the modification where you can still take the posture even if you don't have necessarily the flexibility. So left foot will thread between the arms and reach back. Then right leg extends. You can always bend that right knee too, it makes it a little easier to balance. It looks really cool too. All right, that's in the family of EPK, Padakum Now those of you that want to take the actual arm balance, 
Again, I downloaded with the elbow as support on the last side, so I'm going to download without the elbow as support on this side. You'll reach that left leg forward. Reach the right leg back. You really got to pull the heart through to compensate for lack of that elbow. And then shoot it back. Inhale to Urdhva Mukha. You can always step it back too. Exhaling, Adha Mukha, Shanasana, Downward Facing Dog Pose. Clearing breath when you get there, yogis. Inhale deeply. Exhale, let it go. Right leg extends up and back as you inhale. Bend in the left knee, coil up some potential energy, and it might literally look like this. A little hop switch. And that's perfectly fine. Get comfortable with hopping in the middle of the room. Handstanders, take it up. And when you get caught in your handstand, work a leg switch. You can pause at the top, squeeze those legs together, reach out through the balls of the feet, and then slowly lower. Again, right foot can toe tap the right wrist. Left foot steps way back. Inhale, rise, high crescent pose. Both arms sweep up. Hands come through heart center. Inhale as you find left. Exhale, twist to the right. Left elbow hooks over the right knee. Press the palms together. You can if you need to. Lower that left knee. Maybe extend the arms. Open the wings. Right hand can reach back. Outer left hip, full bind. Left arm threads underneath. Birds take flight. Left foot steps forward. Press up, lift up. Root to your eyes. Bird of paradise. And then slowly lower birds. Pressing down through the right foot. Shift weight into crown. Bound, twisted half moon. Step it way back. Releasing the bind. Inhale, rise. High crescent. Now pressing down through the right foot, draw your left knee into your chest, come to stand. Right hand to right hip, left piece on fingers and thumb, can catch the left big toe. Extend left leg forward. Send in breath. Open the left leg out to the left. Maybe go tree branch, maybe hinge your hips. Slowly lower that left foot down to meet the right. And then rise it back up again. Well done, yogis. Back through the center, right hand reaches across, catch the outer edge of the knee, outer edge of the foot. Reach your left hand back. Twist. Firm the navel, and as you twist, gaze over the left shoulder, left fingertips. Back through the center. Interlace fingers. Around the left sole of the foot, slowly lower down, pistol squatters. And then when you're ready, press it up, lift it up, root to rise up. Uti to asa gustasana. Release the foot, hands to hips, or grow branches. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep it back, warrior three. Gently bend the right knee, left foot steps way back. High crescent pose, both arms sweep. Hands can come to mat, go right into your hip stretch, or take it up, handstanders. Now, this time, bending in the right knee, kick your right heel towards your right seat, re extend up in the left foot like a Nike swish. Maybe pull the gaze through. Work your jaw and dart upon the chin lock. And then, when you're complete here, feel free if you want to work a scorpion tail as well. Right foot can come on top of the left thigh. Figure four. Gently apply pressure. Pull the gaze forward. Melt the heart. And then slowly lower. Right foot can toe tap. That right wrist. And left foot steps way back. Left knee lowers. And walk the hands up onto your right thigh. Interlace, press the thigh away. Now let the hips dip. Come onto the fleshy part of the left knee. Bend left knee, reach back with the left hand through your left foot. Press heel towards seat. Up 
Optional, you can if you want to. Take an overhead grip here. Gently release, straighten through the right leg. Half splits, full splits, slide right foot forward, walk left foot back. Maybe tuck the back toes and engage the left thigh with the left knee up. Drive that hip forward. Keep that engagement, maybe float the arms up. Optional, you can work the quad stretch here. Bend left knee, press heel towards seat. Again, maybe overhead grip. Gently release, re bend the right knee. Walk the right foot behind your left wrist. Release the right knee behind the right wrist. Gaze back at the left leg in line with the hip. Inhale as you find length and exhale into forward fullness. Ease into the hip stretch. Wow, I feel like I went swimming. <laughs> What's trippy too, I, when I first got into yoga, I never sweat so much in my life. So you have to also understand, those of you that are uh, maybe heavily sweating, <laughs> and if you're, especially if you're new to the practice and you're like, why am I sweating so much? The sweat is actually the water element purifying, right? We burn away the impurities and the water element washes them out. So, and sometimes the sweat kind of smells really rain, and that's okay. That means you're purging some really, really good stuff. So that's a good thing. Keep up the good work. And maybe it's kind of nice that if, we're, if you are doing home practice, which most of us are, because all the studios are closed. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. I honestly got so embarrassed when I first started practicing. Literally pools of sweat, just like puddles. <laughs> Anyways, I'll stop talking about that. Anyways. Walk the hands in, and then bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand for the left foot. I'm always digging for new stuff though, so there's, and there's always something to, to work into and to slowly deteriorate and dissolve with your alchemy, so um, keep up that sweating. Sweating is good. I call it divine sweat. Maybe foot into elbow crease, reach back for fingertips. And you can also take the overhead grip here too if you'd like. Deep Ujjayi breaths wherever you are. Gently release, tug the back toes, engage the left leg, lift the left knee up, slide the right leg over to the left. And set the right hip down. Walk the hands to the right. Left forearm lowers. Gently twist. Bring the spine out of toxins. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Back through the center. Pressing down through the forearms. And actually drag that right hip back behind. Breathe into the psoas. Muscle that connects the leg to the trunk. Amazing. And then walk the hands back in. Hands plant or foot in front of your right hip. Press up, lift up, variation of plank. Left foot swings down, left arm extends. Roll your left shoulder back. Maybe float the right foot up, left hand can catch. All right, reach it forward towards the front of the room. Release. Re bend into the right knee, left hand plants. Sweep the right leg up and back, open it out, bend the knee, maybe work into. Side plank, you can lower a knee, you can lower a forearm. Maybe float a tree, yogi toe lock. If you fancy the overhead grip, feel free. Gently release, wild open. Full urban dhyanasa, if it's a part of your practice. Vinyasa, if it's pleasing. Roll it back into down dog, right leg extending. Maybe those of you that love chin balance vinyasas, busting out all the inversions today. Chin to mat, slowly lower, take it up. And vinyasa. 
cross. Inhale, Urdhva. Exhale, Adho Mukha, Svanasana. Clearing breath. <laughs> Inhale deeply. Exhale, let it go. <sighs> now, left leg extends. One more side to go, yogis. You got this. Bending the right knee again. It could literally look like this. Leg switch. Just getting used to wielding your legs in space. I know they're really big in proportion to the arms. Take it up. Hand centers. Sometimes that plugging of the finger head going in is what saves it. Get those hips to stack. Legs come together. Squeeze the legs together at the top. Then slowly lower that left foot down. Toe tap. Right foot way back. Inhale. Both arms sweep up high pressing. Hands to the heart center. Twist to the left. Right elbow. Hooks over left knee. Maybe extend the arms with the weights. You can lower the right knee if you need. Maybe left hand reaches back. Outer hip, right arm threads underneath. Full binders, maybe take flight. Right foot steps forward, press up, lift up. Root to rise. Twisted bird of paradise. Straighten through both legs, gaze over the left shoulder. Birds, take your time. Coming back, pressing down through the left foot. Shift weight forward to the crown, right leg extends back. Then I'll have your toes on your way back. And then step it way back, release the bind. Inhale as you rise. High pressing. Here we go. Pressing down through the left foot, drawing right into your chest. Can you stand? Left hand to left hip. Press the shin bone back. Lift the kneecap up. That left leg is engaged. Right piece, side fingers and thumb. Catch the right big toe. Extend right leg forward. Now open right leg out to the right, maybe grow a tree branch to your left. Maybe hinge at hips and slowly lower it down. Right foot to meet left foot. Deep breaths, rise it back up again. Keep sharing life force energy with all of this good work. Back through the center. Left hand reaches across, stretch out of your knee or out of your foot. Reach your right hand back. From the navel as your twist, gaze over the right shoulder, right fingers it. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Amazing, back through the center. Interlace fingers around the right shoulder foot. Pistol squatters, take it down. It's not easy, I know. Take a moment at the bottom, gather yourself, gather your energy, and then one big burst of energy straight through the left foot to rise you up. Help yourself up if you need to. I know left side is hard. Hands to hips or grow branches here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep it back, warrior three. And then gently bending in the left knee. Right foot steps way back, high pressing pose. Hands can come to the mat. Either go into your hip openers a little early or hand standers. Take it up. Maybe try that stag handstand, bending the left knee, heel towards seat, and then pull the gaze forward and through the arms through your chin lock. Maybe coming back through, nice and slow. Left foot on top of the right thigh, figure four. Scorpion tail, brush the shield down with your toes. Slowly lower, left foot can toe tap that left wrist. Right foot steps way back. And right knee lowers, tuck toes, walk hands up onto the left thigh, interlace. Press the thigh away. Hard work is done. 
Again, just go as far as feels comfortable. You never want these poses to be daunting. You want to return back to them with enthusiasm, excitement, and the anticipation of a delicious opening like those hips dip. Left forearm to left thigh. Bend the right knee. Reach back with the right hand to the right foot. And again, just push as far as feels comfortable for that hip flexor quad stretch. Send in breath. And then maybe overhead grip if it's a part of your practice. Gently release, straighten through your left leg. Half splits, maybe working towards full splits. Again, just go as far as feels comfortable, yogis. We are remolding, reforming, rearranging. You can tuck the back toes, engage the right thigh, lift the right knee up, drag the right hip forward as you drag the left hip back. Find that engagement, you can float the arms up. Optional, bending in the right knee, right hand reaches back, quad stretch, press heel to our seat. Overhead grip if it's a part of your practice. Gently release, re-bend the left knee, then roll up the left foot behind the right wrist. Release the left knee behind the left wrist. Knees back at the right knee, align with the hip and toes, you find it, and exhaling forward, fold it. So the title of this class is inspired by Abraham. Abraham Hicks, all my Abraham Hicks fans out there. She talks a lot about filling in grit, and I think it so perfectly correlates with yogic philosophy. We are filling in this grid work. Some people call it the crystalline structure or the tubular channels, the NADIs, N-A-D-I-S, 124,000 if you're counting the masculine and feminine as two separate channels. I prefer 72,000, of course, because we are androgynous beings energetically, but it is nice to have that reminder that all of the channels do need to be balanced and their masculine or feminine attributes. And so it is a process. And just like Abraham Hicks says, you can't take any quantum leaps, and you wouldn't want to, right? If you were to take a quantum leap to a destination that you're aspiring to get to, it'd be like if you're on a train going in one direction, going, you know, maybe it's like the Euro Rail, and you're going like 300 miles per hour, and then you just book a Yui and go in the other direction, again, 300 hours, miles per hour, that would be so devastating and traumatic to your body. <laughs> so we want to slowly rearrange the, the elements, the gunas, so that we can raise our vibrational frequency and, and call in what it is that we are truly wanting. And so we are very much filling in the grid here. And I know sometimes I get a hard time for sequencing so many postures into my classes. But sometimes I feel like if we just do the vinyasas and the sun salutations, that burns up so much class time. And then our time for drawing sacred geometry with our bodies in space has largely diminished. And there's only so many of these magnanimous shapes that get filled in. And so I, I try to fill in as many sacred geometric forms as possible so that by the end of the practice, you have this exquisite sacred geometric yantra right? Or like much like the flower of life, if you're familiar with that sacred geometry. And of course, I add lots of things in, so you can choose to add them in, or you can stay where you are. So a lot of these different variations are taken from the same posture, just taken to another, another level of expression. So feel free to keep going, but if your body's telling you no, then listen in, tune in, and, and pause, hit the pause button and see whatever is possible, what the next steps are, and your, your mind will just take it in 
and integrate. You might even have, I call them yoga drinks, where you're actually doing those postures. And it's so trippy because it's like your mind is tricking itself into the believability of actually being able to hold that space. So it's all part of the process. All right, start to walk the hands in. Maybe quad stretch, press heel towards seat. Maybe overhead grip if it's a part of your practice. Then square off those hips, scissor the thighs together, protect your lower spine. Gently release, tuck the back toes, engage the right back, lift the right knee, slide left leg to the right and set the left hip down. Walk the hands to the left, right forearm lowers and gently twist, bringing the spine out of toxins. Back into center, pressing down through the forearms. Drag those hips, drag your left hip back behind. Breathe into the psoas. Muscle up connects the leg to the trunk. Amazing. And then walk the hands back in, press it up, lift it up, variation of plank. Right foot swings down, right arm extends, roll the right shoulder back. Maybe float left foot up, right hand catches outer edge. Reach it forward to the side of the room. Release, re bend left knee, right hand plant, sweep left leg up and back. You can take some hip circles, ankle circles, maybe you rotate onto the outer edge of the right foot. You can lower a knee or a forearm. Will your left hip to stack? Maybe go be toe lock. Maybe bend left knee, reach back. Bow or overhead grip. Kapunjalasana. Release. Step left foot back wide open, maybe full Urdhva Dhanasana. Roll it back into Adho Mukha with the left leg extended. Maybe you just take a one legged vinyasa. And then, of course, those of you that did some on the other side, shin balance vinyasa, chin to mat, slow lower, take it up. Inhale, Urba. And exhale, Adho Mukha. Shvanasana, thumb down dog. Knees to mat, hips to heels. Child's pose it out for a few breaths. Roll the spine forward over your thighs, rest your brow on the mat. Take a few moments to absorb. Rolling the spine up through the seated. Once more, just as a little palate cleanser, tuck the toes and take a seat on top of your heels. Sweep the hands out and up, beginning and ending the same way. Interlace all the fingers except for the index finger and thumb. Inhale deeply through the nose. Open the mouth and vent like a dog. Take it up into your nose. Toes, gentle drum roll, kick the feet out. You can show it to the heels, fingertips pointing towards your knees, and move your way back so they peel the heels of the hands up off of the mat. Fingertips will lift very last. Walk your hands back, lift your knees up, stretching out the bridges of the feet. Maybe lift up on top of the toe knuckles. Woo! <laughs> Got some fresh toe knuckle thoughts. Slowly lower back down again. All right, walk the hands forward back into your tabletop. Now I'll invite you to attempt the jump through. You don't have to attempt it if you don't want to. You can always just step the feet to the front of the mat and then lower it down, take a seat. Those of you that are feeling it, maybe those of you that are a little bit more advanced, try to take it up in a handstand and slowly lower it down. Lift the heels, 
Bend the knees, gaze forward in between the thumbs. Exhale, step, lightly hop. Good, back. Back up that trunk. Now you straighten out. Figure seven on your way down. And gently take a seat. Slide the flesh to the bum. Out from underneath. Inhale, sweep the hands out and up. And exhale forward, fold postural and also left forward, fold it and breathe into the lower back. Rolling the spine back up through the seat, draw your knees in, soles of the feet come together, knees out wide, scoot the hips towards the heels. Hands under the feet, press the elbows into the inner thighs as you fold. So you can repeat body counseling here, or those of you that want it, Legs can come out wide. This is another trajectory in the universe or multiverse that gets often neglected in the yoga studio, I think, because of limited space, the length of our mats, maybe if you'd like to lift it up into your middle split. And enjoy. Maybe before I sit back into your Upavishta, walk the hands over to the right. Right arm inseam, right leg, sweep left arm up overhead, side body stretch. Back into center, walk the left hand over to your left inseam. Sweep the right arm up and overhead. Back through the center. Forward fold once more. And then walk it in, hands underneath the inner thighs, and then slide the feet in, draw your knees in, slowly roll down onto your backs, and we're closing it up. So roll it all the way down, hug your knees in, rock it gently from side to side, hug the right knee and extend your left leg out. Scoot the hips to the right, draw the right hip over to your left, stack the right hip on top of left hip, roll the right shoulder down to the ground, breathe into your lower back, side body and ribcage. Back through the center, half happy baby, maybe lay behind the head. Optional. I'm gonna throw it in too, just cause maybe left leg extends, swing left leg down. Right up into seated with a couple of hands can plant. You float that left leg up. And gently step back down, roll it back onto your back. Release the right leg, hug right knee in, and switch. Hug left knee in, extend right leg out. Scoot the hips to the left, draw the left knee to the right. Stuck in left hip on top of the right hip, the left shoulder down to the ground. By the way, little pops are totally normal. And again, like an old house, you'll start to become familiar with where all those little pops are. And as you continue to expand in your ability to hold space, the pops might start to get deeper, maybe not quite as loud. They might get a little bit more, uh, like, like they sound like they're traveling through more tissue back through the center. You're really digging in and finding the toxicity Half happy baby. And that's the opposite by the toxic wind releasing. Maybe take it behind the head, leg behind the head variation here. Optional. And then maybe right leg extends. Swing the right leg down. Come up to seated. A little bit of engagement in the cervical spine to keep the leg back there. Hands can plant, float that right leg up. Back down again. Whew. That is delicious and release. Hug the 
Hug both knees in. Extend the legs straight up. Wrap the elbows in. Press down through the upper arms. Engage your core. Keep the gaze directly up. Shoulders stand up. Walk hands down back. Press chest towards chin. Breathe into the back of the neck. And maybe if you're working it, you can take your lotus. If you don't have a lotus, no worries. Maybe lower the feet down. Come off, snap bow. You can bend the knees around your ears for chronic dasana, or you can, if you have your lotus, take ping dasana. This one's kind of tricky to balance, but you can wrap your arms around your lotus and catch fingertips. And then slowly release the spine back down. Hands come underneath your seat. If you have your lotus, keep it. Press up, lift up, and let the head hang back. Crawl head to the mat. Maybe hands grab those feet if you're in lotus to accentuate the heart opening. Breathe into that space. And then gently release. Happy baby pose. Grab averages of the feet. Optional. Dwey Parashrikshasana. This has got to be one of my favorite poses. It just feels so lovely in the lower spine, especially if you took all of those opportunities for the overhead grip. Lower spine will really appreciate a little sit in your Vinodrasana. Send that breath in. Right, this is a part of the grid too. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> What's up, Molly? <laughs> hey, nice down dog. Gently release. <laughs> Extend the legs out. Feet flop open. Palms face up. And just rest. Feel with all of these energetic lines. The grid work that you illuminated with your alchemy. Your transmutation. And take a nice deep inhalation in through the nose. Exhale, let it go. <sighs> Resting here for as long as you need to absorb the benefits of your practice. You can really feel with all of these energetic lines that you've reactivated. And the highest light within you truly sees and honors the highest light within you. I thank you on behalf of the whole universal grid that you are for this work that you've invested in yourself and all of creation today. Namaste.